Mic turn on. Well, I appreciate that info. I, I just didn't that. That is good info. That is good info. So. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being here. God bless y'all. We're blessed. We're blessed to be in God's house. We're blessed to have another time, another opportunity to come worship the Lord and uh, thank for all he does. Um, we got got... Uh, Keep the church in your prayers. Keep uh, keep Kim in your prayers. She's recovering from surgery. Uh, keep uh, just keep the congregation, the friends, and family all in prayers. And uh, the Lord is with us. The Lord is with us. I know that uh, uh, Kara she had surgery over Tennessee today, and I was told that she she uh, got out successful. So I'm thankful for that. Um, keep remembering Jamie in her prayers, please, from South Carolina. Friend Brianna, ask some prayers for her too. And remember the loss. And, uh, anybody else got a prayer request? Remember um, Jennifer's husband, Greg? Mm -hmm. um, he took his last treatment this week, but, or last week, the week before they did a PET scan, I think. Yeah. And they did find one new spot. So he's got to go in two weeks, I think, for some more tests. Any unspoken tonight? Well, let's pray. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love and praise you. Thank you this time. Thank you for another opportunity to come worship you, Lord. God's good to us. Lord, I ask you tonight, Lord, to bless the service, Lord. I ask you, Lord, to bless the request. Lord, bless the spoken and unspoken request. Lord, particularly the lost, Lord God. we got friends and family that don't know you, Jesus. Lord, help us be a light, Lord God. And ask your spirit, Lord God, to just convict your souls, Lord, draw them in. And Lord God, again, you see all these requests, Lord God, desire for healing and, and desire, Lord Jesus, to be more like you. And Lord, a need, Lord Jesus, for your wisdom and grace. And again, we give you praise tonight. We worship you, Lord. Help us, Lord, in all things. In thy name, amen. Praise the Lord. Long years ago, when I didn't sin, I had no hope, no peace within. Down on my knees, when I believe, I prayed to Jesus, and He gladly set me free. I never shall forget the day. When all the burdens from my soul were over it made me happy, glad, and free. I'll sing it, shout it, for he's everything to me. Now I can feel him by my side. My feeble steps, he comes to God. When trials come, he comforts me. Through faith in him or sin, I have the victory. I never shall forget the day when all the burdens from my soul were rolled away. It made me happy, glad, and free. I'll sing and shout it for he's everything to me. Oh, sinner, come to Jesus now. At his dear feet, just humbly down. Confess to him your every sin. He'll save and cleanse you, peace and joy within. I never shall forget the day when all the burdens from my soul were rolled away. It made me happy, glad, and free. I'll sing and shout it for he's everything to me. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. So praise the Lord. Um, want us to think tonight think about how we prepare ourselves 
to be more like Him. And that's what we're what's the sermon tonight. Preparing ourselves to be more like Him. Okay? We're going to be in Galatians and we're going to be in James tonight. And uh, we will start Galatians 5, 19 through 25. Galatians 5, 19 through 25. And it says here, and again, Lord bless the sermon. Thank you, Jesus. And it says here in Galatians 5, 19 through 25, it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before as I told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. All right? So right now I'm giving you a big list of things not to do. And I'm giving you a big list of, of, of traits and characteristics you need to stay away from. And it's going to roll right into the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit, this is the, uh, Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, Maintenance, temperance against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Now, my dear bride has been doing the fruits of the Spirit downstairs on Sunday morning with the kids. And I am blessed that not only is my wife the kids Sunday school teacher my brother is the adult Sunday school teacher and it's a blessing because I got two people close close to me that are working and teaching and trying to help others grow in the grace, grow in God grow in his holy word the wonderful Bible the wonderful holy scriptures and I'm thankful for that and, and, and when you have people and I feel there's people in the congregation as well. When you have folks that are wanting to be in the Word, wanting to be in His Spirit, wanting to be more like Him, okay, then you know yourself that if you want to be more like God, you will pray, you will look to Him, you will read the Bible, you will be around godly things. And when you and I associate ourselves with godly things, we're more apt to have the love, the joy, the peace, the long-suffering, the gentleness, the goodness, the faith, the meekness, the temperance. We're more apt to have those things. We're also more apt to stay away from those things that we just started talking about up front. The adultery, the fornication, the uncleanness, the sinness. The adultery, the witchcraft, the hatred, the variance, the emotions, the wrath, the strife, the seditions, the heresies, the envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings. All those things, okay? All those things, they are characteristics of people that aren't living for the Lord. Now, I'm not saying those things don't show up in our lives. I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying is, is that we should know when these things pop up in our life. There should be an unction from the Holy One. There should be the Spirit. There should be the Word. Hopefully there's a preacher or a teacher that will say like, hey, wait a minute. You need to be acting like this. This is what we need to do. This is where we need to be. There's this guy who comes to the library. And I like him. And he's written some Christian books. And we got to talking Monday. And we got to talking about thoughts about repentance and thoughts about uh, what it means to really turn from sin. And even th things like rebuking and things like judging others, being a righteous judge. And we we're talking about these things. And you know, looking at that, 
if you and I are walking in the Spirit, as it says in that last verse, Galatians 5, 25, it says, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit, okay? If we're living for Christ, let's also walk in Christ. See, that's that Lord and Savior deal all again, all again. We want the Savior. We want salvation, okay? This world wants salvation. But that Lord business, they got issues with it because they got to conform and they got to, hey, Lord, it's your way and you and you alone. Not everybody's into that. Mm -hmm. And you want God on your own terms. And you start rewriting the Holy Word of God. And you start letting things in the pulpit that shouldn't be in the pulpit. And you start letting things in your own personal life that should not be in your own personal life. And before you know it, my problems, issues. I'm not as close to God as I used to be. I don't serve the Lord like I used to. And I've seen it time and time again, and sadly I have to confess I've seen it within myself at times. We get busy. We get priorities. We get work. We get family. We get hobbies. We get things that distract us. And sometimes we'll put God on the side. Sometimes we'll put God on the back burner. Sometimes it would be like, well, I'm just going to go this way for a little bit. And the whole time the Lord's saying, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. If we're living for Christ, let's also walk in Christ. And if you and I will walk in Christ, we'll be more like Him. We'll be more like what He wants us to be. Let's look at Galatians, the sixth chapter the 6th chapter of Galatians. And this is the 6th through the 10th verse. The 6th through the 10th verse. And it says here, Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting, life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Praise God, I love that. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. You know, I look at that ninth verse there, and John Morgan, I think about you all, I really do. Um, I think about parents. I really do. I think about folks that are good parents. And I'm sure you get tired sometimes and be like, you know, I just sometimes, I know y'all love a little saga, but I'm sure there's days, and this is coming from someone who's never been a parent. But from the outside looking in, I'm like, I'm sure the, the, there's a day or two that'd be like, you know, I wish old Sawyer just take care of himself. <laughs> got yeah, got Grammy and Pop on. There you go. You know, I'd like to sleep a while. Or I'd like to just, you know, just not have to be on guard, not have to be on watch, just for just for a smidge. It's not that you don't love them. It's not that you don't care. You know, and I, I see that way in Christianity. I see Christians like that. You know, God said, "Listen, you're the light of the world." We preached that this Sunday. You know, you're the salt of the earth, you know. And we got to keep on being that light. We got to keep being that salt. And there's days we might not want to do that. There's days you'd be like, man, you know, I just want to pull the covers up over my head and just lay here. Or, you know, uh, I want to, I, I'm going to go down the food line and I'm going to get me three boxes of ice cream and I'm going to have my own personal ice cream buffet. <laughs> All right? And I don't want to pick up the phone, and I don't want to answer questions, and I don't have to be at work, and I don't have to be at church. I'm just going to sit here and pick out all my ice cream and not have a care in the world. And that's, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but what happens is, is that we have an attitude sometimes, okay? And it's like, it tells us if we sow to the flesh, we will reap to the but if we sow in the Spirit, we'll reap in the Spirit. We all need vacations. We all need time off. We all need to recharge. 
We all need breaks. We all need breaks. We all need that time. We all need that time. But make sure it's just the time. And it's not the eternity. Okay? Make sure it's just the time. Because there's someone counting on y'all's prayers. There's someone counting on y'all's witness. There's someone counting on you singing the song and patting the back, shaking the hand. There's somebody counting on me doing a sermon tonight. There's somebody counting on me preach the word. There's someone who wants Sunday school. There's somebody needing that friendly voice, that friendly text, that friendly message. There's somebody out there that needs that support. And when you and I reap in the spirit, we're constantly, praise the Lord, we're putting Christ first. We're saying, Lord, I'm going to do this because you've done so much for me, Lord. I'm going to do this. Lord, you've blessed me so much. I'm going to do this. You've helped me so much, Lord. I praise the Lord. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to stand up, raise my hand, and praise you. I'm going to sing a song. I'm going to go out and do something in your name to glorify you, Lord. And it talks about that. Don't be, don't be weary and well do it. For a due season we shall reap if we faint not. You know, when we get tired, when we get wore out, when we get weary, when we get, you know, when things are a struggle, we got to go back to Jesus. The Creator knows what the creation is. It's like, Lord, I'm having difficulties doing this right now. Lord, renew my strength. Renew my mind. Renew my heart. Renew the zeal, Lord Jesus. Renew that within me. Lord God, let me get past this moment. Help me to overcome Help me to overcome, Jesus. And it says, therefore, in the 10th verse, and it says, as we have, therefore, opportunity, let us do good unto all men. It says all, everybody. It says everybody. And then there's that nice little calm. And it says, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. You know, I've been in churches, and I've been amongst Christian folks. And, and sometimes, my goodness, I've seen people just tear each other pieces. And I'm like, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? You know, let's come together, one mind, one heart. Let's come together, one accord. Let's work out our differences. Let's go to the Lord. Lord, help me be more like you. That's the sermon tonight. Help me to be what you'd have me to be. So there's two parts to that. If I'm having struggles being good to all men, that's something we got to pray about. And if I'm having issues being good to the people in the household of faith, that's something I got to pray about. See? Now, I really, you know, I, I, I don't know the hearts and minds of everybody that comes to this church. I don't. But I pray for this church. I pray for this congregation. And I pray that things are whole and good. And I, th I pray for things that would be peaceful. And I pray that we would come together. And that's my prayer. And as a pastor, I think to myself, if I'm not demonstrating joy, if I'm not demonstrating peace, if I'm not demonstrating the things that the Lord would have us to do, then I cannot expect it of the congregation. So I've got to go out. I've got to, hey, let's look to the Word. Let's go to Jesus. Let's pray. Let's find out what God would do in this situation. Let's find out what the Lord would do in this circumstance. Uh, I was watching a video about people who have, uh, or skeptics, and uh, people that, you know, they, they, they claim that Christianity isn't real and all these things. And this guy was talking about if you ever if you ever come across someone who's like, well, the Bible's just full of errors. Ask them specifically, work, which one? What exactly are you talking about? Okay? And be good about it. Let me find you an answer on this. Okay? Now, if they can't list specifics, so you're putting it back on them, okay? If someone claims there's an error, someone claims there's an issue, some claim there's some kind of problem or whatever, it, you put it back on them, no bird of proof, okay? And if they don't want to give an example, if they don't want to give, you know, specifics, you know, 
Still be kind to them. Keep that offer open. I tell you what, if you ever want to talk about any specific thing in the Bible that you feel that's an error, I, I would count it an honor that you'd come talk to me. You'd be nice to me. You see? Um, I talk to people that I've told people we have free will. And you can believe whatever you want to believe. Believe whatever you want to believe in this world. I simply just want to ask you what's backing up your beliefs. And you'll be surprised how many people believe something just because they were either taught that way or they just feel it's right in themselves. They really don't have any back on why they do and believe what they do and believe. And you can put that seed in there and say, like, let me tell you about Jesus. Let me, I believe in Jesus. I believe in he and he alone is the savior of the world. And you can open the door and plant a seed. But we can't be weary in that. we got to keep on keeping on. Let's keep on. Got one more little section here tonight for you. How we can be more like him. James 3, the third chapter of James 15 through 18. Third chapter of James 15 through 18. And it states, This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy, to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruits of righteousness is sown in peace, of them that make peace. There's this one, I'm not going to mention his name, there's this one friend of mine on Facebook. And I call him a pot stirrer. He's always stirring something up. And I've mentioned to him so many times, if you go to stir the pot, you got to lick the stick. Okay? Because it's going to come back to you, brother. It's coming back. It's going to happen. And you see, I love this James 3, 18 verse because it says, and the fruits of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Oh my. Oh my. I want you to think back to maybe somebody that you know. It could be a man, it could be a woman. But think about somebody you know. can do something better than anybody that you know. Anybody that you know. Somebody that can do something better than anybody that you know. Okay? And I, I, I think of my wife. My wife is, is a very still water type person. And of all the people I know on a level and a depth that I know, she has a peace and a calmness that I envy. And, and I look at her and it, it makes me, it pleases me to know in and I'm thankful to know in that she has that. So when I think of someone who's calm, and when I think of someone who, you know, don't fly off the handle, I think of my wife, okay? And my wife is someone who can sow peace because she's a peaceable person, you know? You think about somebody that they might make the best banana pudding, or they might cook the best steak, or they might... They might be the best welder you ever saw, or they might, you know, they might be the world's greatest cabinet maker or whatever. I mean, they just got this one thing. They can do better than anybody that you know. So if you ever have need of those things, you go to that person. You see, you go to that person. And why do you go to that person? Because there is a reputation that they have. Okay? They have peace and they're wanting to make peace. 
You see, when you find someone who's got peace in their life, when you find someone's got peace in their heart, they are wanting to have peace not only within themselves, but they want their friends, they want their family as a pastor, they want the congregation, they want the workplace, they want the neighborhood, they want everybody in peace. All right? We want to be living in peace. Okay? That 16th verse, for when envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. You know, every time I've ever seen people get upset, and there's been times when I've been upset as well, there's usually some type of misunderstanding. There's usually something that, well, that's not how I heard what was said, or that's not how I saw what happened, or, well, I didn't see the whole thing. I just saw it happen to these two or three. I didn't see it happen to more than that. And it bothered me. It just happened to the two or three, you see. So you fall into this strife. You fall into envy, okay? And when there's jealousy and when there's turmoil, okay, there is confusion in every evil work. You think about that. Well, if they're going to be mean to me, I'll be mean to them. If they're going to lie to me, I'll lie to them. If they're going to try to trip me up, well, I'm going to try to trip them up. You see what I'm saying here? Yeah. When you have jealousy and turmoil, envy and strife, when you're angry, when you're bitter, you're going to start justifying your own actions. Okay? I so can do that. I want to ask you one question. I'm going to put this to myself as well. Put this to myself. How would Jesus handle that? How would Jesus deal with this? Would Jesus be like, well, if you don't mistreat me, I'll mistreat you too. You know, the Lord, there is correction in the Lord, and there is guidance in the Lord, and there's direction, and there is a time to repent. But at the same time, there's also mercy, and there's patience, and there's forgiveness. You see, and sometimes when we go into that 18th verse, in the fruit of righteousness, are we righteous? Are we on that road of righteousness? Are we born again? Do we have the blood in our life? Are we in the Lamb's book of life? Are we truly Christians? Are we Christ-like? Are we following the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? If you can answer yes to those questions, then you've got righteousness, you see. And the effects of having a righteous attitude and a righteous soul and a righteous spirit and a righteous frame of mind is that you want to have peace in your world. We were coming up the road and I was working today and I was working outside and it started raining. And I caught myself when I said this. I said, I didn't want certain stuff getting wet. And then I was like, well, I didn't care if these other folks got wet. And then I turned around and I said, you know what? I really don't want that. I don't want that. There was something there. It was like, is that really what you want? You know, and something simple about getting caught out in the rain. But think about it. It's like, what are, what, are, what are our fruits saying about us? And what are our fruits saying about who we are? So I ask you tonight, and I encourage you tonight, let's be more like Christ. Let's look at the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5. Let's go over into Galatians 6 and, and be not weary and well doing. And let's look in James 3 and know that wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly. It's like this wisdom, excuse me, this wisdom that from the earth, okay, is devilish, evil, strife, worrisome, confusion. When we draw from the world, but the wisdom that is from above, the wisdom that is from Christ, who we want to be like is pure. It's first pure. Pure. You ever had good water? I'm talking good, clean. Woo, good water. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Sometimes that is the best drink. You can take care of a lot of stuff with just 
a good, clean, cold glass of water. It's pure. And then there's peace. And it's gentle. It's gentle. I've had people that I know disagreed with me. I know I aggravated. And they'd still treat me gentle. Some people call her sir. But they chill. Even though I'm being aggravated. And there's goodness. And there's faith. You see? And there's all these things. And you see, that is qualities and attributes of them and us when we follow the Lord. I'll ask you tonight. Are your actions pure? Are they peaceable? Are they gentle? Are they easy to be entreated? It's like, is it easy to walk into? Is there a calmness about you? You know? You ever work with someone who's really uptight? I mean, just tight and lay on? You're just about afraid to ask them anything. Because you don't know if they're going to go off, or you don't know if they're going to sit there and just ramble there all day long. You see that? Easy. Entreatable. They're, they're entreated, full of mercy. Full of mercy. My. Woo! Boy, Jesus, I need your mercy. Lord, and Lord, help us to have that mercy within our own self and with our own life. Lord, let us have mercy with those around us. Let us have mercy. Let us walk in mercy and good fruits. And it says without partiality. Oh, my. And without hypocrisy. Oh, perfect. Boy, I tell you, that's stepping on my toes tonight. Because I know there's people. Man, there's some people, man, I can get in my shirt. I just just do my last dime. I love them so much. And then there's some people I'm like, I need to get an altar. <laughs> I really need to pray about this one. Okay? Because they're getting on my nerves or they're aggravating me or I've just been burnt or whatever. And it'd be like, Lord, how would you have me to treat him? How would you have me to treat him, Lord? And see, that's what separates Christians from the world. You see, someone's truly a Christian, they're going to ponder these things. They're going to act differently. They're going to react differently. And I'd love to say and tell you I've done it like that my whole life, for my whole life, or my whole walk as a Christian. I have it. But there's times I have. I know there's times I have. I know there's times I'm like, Lord, I'm going to let you be in control here, Lord God. And I'm just, I, Lord, you know, it's you, you alone. And by letting him be in control, I'm just saying, I'm going to follow his words and his way. we got free will. I ain't got to say over the Lord. Please don't hear that. That's not how I meant it to sound. The Lord's going to do what the Lord's going to do, but the Lord gives us free will. And the Lord's telling us to, to come and follow him. So, Lord, Lord, lead. Help me, Lord. Help me. And when you and I let the Lord lead, okay, then the fruits of righteousness will be sown in peace, and we will be able to make peace. Praise the Lord. Let's, let's pray tonight. Lord Jesus, we love and praise you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this time. God's good to us. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to preach tonight. Thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to come and worship your sweet name, Lord Jesus. Lord, I just ask you tonight. Lord, I feel everyone here saved, Lord God. But Lord, you know the hearts of all those. Lord, Lord, if there's a need of salvation, let this be the death. Lord Jesus, if there's, if, there's a prayer, if there's a need for any kind of prayer, anything we need to come together, Lord. Lord, we will come together in thy name, knowing it is you and you alone that does the healing and the restoring and any blessings to be had. It is from you, Father above. We love Jesus. Anybody need prayer, please come. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for my friends and my family and my brothers and sisters in Christ here tonight. And I thank you, Jesus, again for one more time, Lord God, to come and worship and praise you. Lord, I ask you again, Lord God, help us to be more like you. And we just give you praise and we worship you. In thy name, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Love y'all. Uh, I want to remind you again, uh, August 5th, we'll have that BBS back to school day. Looking forward to that. And, um, uh, just keep the church in your prayers. And uh, 
Again, thank y'all for being here tonight. Anybody got anything before we close? John, would you close the prayer? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Dear Lord, thank you for that. Serving from what Pastor Tim, Lord. Thankful that we can all be together here, Lord, in your house. And let us take you home with us, Lord. Seek your face, Lord. Be somebody's light, spread some joy, show others that being a follower of you is like this. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all. Love y'all. God bless.